everybody. Welcome to Poland Daily Travel. Thanks for watching this evening. I've got Anthony McFarlane Gonzalez, and we're talking about traveling to Kiev during the wartime. Welcome to the show, uh, Anthony. It's good to see you. How Thank are you things in Bydgoszcz? Cold and wet. <laughs> Cold and wet. Spring, just the way we like it. But it'll soon be, uh, the, the flowers will be out soon. I saw some buds on the trees. I want to talk to you about uh, experiences traveling uh, uh, in uh, Ukraine, of course. We've been doing that over the last few shows uh, during the war. But let's talk about uh, your experience traveling to Kiev during the war. I'm very curious because I haven't been there during the war. Uh, what's it like out there? During the beginning, the first three days, it was just absolutely tra TCP, so traffic control points all over the place. You'd have a mixture of military, police, and militia. Uh, the ones that you were really kind of dangerous on and crossing is the militia ones. So from the T, you really didn't encounter that many TCPs from the border to Lviv, but after Lviv to Kiev, you had an assortment of TCPs. Uh, and then as you're getting towards Kiev, you start seeing more of the military equipment because of <laughs> the obvious you had the Russians coming in from the north and from the east. And they only had one entire bridge section that had the supply chain artery coming from the west. Uh, that was from Lviv, of course. Um, but most of the bridges were blown from the north and to the east, and the southern bridges were blown. So meaning all the entry and exit points from the south, east, and north were blown. Uh, made it travel a lot harder for civilians to get from Kiev to Lviv. That was a safe corridor to go through. Um, so getting the wounded from those entry, from those cities, from the outskirts in was, yeah, it was very hard. It was a lot of paranoia, uh, a lot of skittish individuals. Uh, did, you didn't sleep much for life. I mean, travel was hard. Uh, when we, we had to leave the vehicle in Kiev, because uh, then we were uh, we forced to walk, mm. of course, for obvious reasons. Um, and then, yeah, and then we continued to the east to Kherson. But it was Kiev at that point in time, travel was just hard. And you've been there, have you been there recently to Kiev again? Yeah, Raja, yeah, so yeah, just in what's the, What's the difference now? Uh, the difference now is that most of the roads are back. Uh, the bridges and the construction have been completed on the main roads and arteries. So they're putting the bridges that they, uh, putting the roads back together that they blew up on purpose. And so that way they can continue with travel or normality as much as they can, because they know that without commerce, their economy is going to co uh, collapse, but it's not. So they're doing much stronger. Uh, I, that was very apparent throughout the entire summer, uh, throughout the fall and even through the winter, they've been continuously rebuilding everything. And that's a good thing. Absolutely. So you notice a difference in the mood between uh, the fir you know, first week of the war and uh, when was the last time you were there? No, uh, September. In September? You notice a big difference? You've when been I there know. since then, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. And what was the difference in the mood from the very beginning of the war till, in the first week till uh, then, till this yeah. winter, for example? Desperation was in the beginning. Uh, because it was bleak. They didn't have, the world basically turned their back to them. Uh, the allies that they thought were allies and they were taking their time. That's why I'm really disappointed in the Germans. Uh, dastardly disappointed in the Germans. Um, but now the mood is a lot better. There is, there are high hopes still. They're uneasy and unnerved because they don't know the outcomes that's going to be happening. Um, so, but it's a heck of a lot better. Life is as normal as it can be in Kiev. Uh, businesses are still there, but they've gotten used to the power outages and the constant air raids and the constant bombardment. It's just normal now. It was never normal like that before, um, but it's just something that these people have gotten used to and the Ukrainians are just, you know, they're very resilient. Yeah, normal plus, plus bombs. It, it, it is the most, uh, probably the most consistently long period of bombardment since maybe the Korean War or no, Second World, World War. What? Okay. Second World yeah. War, right? Yep. That's incredible, isn't it? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, we wish the citizens of Kiev 
all the best, obviously. And, uh, you know, I had a friend who went there. Oh, you know him too, Michael. Uh, Michael, and he, and he was staying in one of the nicest hotels. The hotel's still working um, uh, as normal. I remember being there uh, in 2014. 2000, 2014, then 2015, right before the first Russian invasion, there, during Maidan in the December, or November, December, and then during, uh, during in March, right before the invasion, and you know business as usual, but that quiet before the storm, you knew it was coming. I mean, I always talk to just ordinary people who hear things like the people working as concierge in a good hotel, or. Uh, you know, uh, 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 somebody in a good restaurant, a waiter in one of the best, uh, one of the more frequented restaurants, they always have the, the good gossip, it seems. And uh, I remember I was talking to this concierge, and I forget the name of the hotel, I think it's the Intercontinental now. Um, I'm not sure if it was then. And uh, I said, do you think the Russians are going to invade? He said, yeah. We know they are. It's just a matter of of time, which confirmed some other sources I had, uh, both news sources and other sources, government sources in Ukraine. So, uh, yeah, uh, life goes on. It's just life plus bombs in this case. Unfortunately. Yep. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow night. And thanks to Anthony for joining us.